Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I wanted to answer a question that I get a lot. Like, uh, you know, we have two products. Topaz have two wonderful products. Sharpen AI and Denoise AI. And, you know, I get questions, you know, can I use both of these products together? Are there times when I should just use one over the other? And um, I wanted to answer those questions today. So this tutorial is really more of answering questions, not showing you how this software uh, works or anything like that. We all know it's great software, especially if you watch my videos, you know how powerful these two pieces of software can be. But in this uh, tutorial today, I want to just take a look at when do you use these products? When should you combine them or should you not combine them? Should you use one over the other? I'm going to try to answer those questions. And I think by the end of this tutorial, you're going to have a better understanding of how these products should be used. So, hey, let's get started. I've titled this tutorial today, uh, Topaz Sharpen AI, Topaz Denoise AI, which one? Because I want to answer those questions today or that particular question, okay? So I've done that with using different slides so I can explain what I'm trying to tell you today, okay? So we're going to start out with Camera Raw images. Now, I highly recommend that you use Camera Raw whenever you're uh, doing your photography because if you do, you're going to have uh, really high quality image files. But one thing about uh, Camera Raw images, they're, they, they come out of the uh, camera kind of on the soft side and there's not going to be any noise reduction added to them. Now, a lot of cameras will add uh, some sharpening and uh, noise reduction to like JPEG type images, but you're not going to get that in Camera Raw. You're going to have to do all your editing yourself. Hey, but that's where the joy of editing comes in, right? And I have a note, almost all of your Camera Raw images will need some uh, some noise reduction and sharpening, okay? Unless you're shooting with very low ISOs like ISO 50. Sometimes you can get away without doing noise reduction, but they're all going to need some sort of sharpening. That is pretty much a given. Now, when should you uh, do noise reduction and sharpening? And my recommendation is as soon as you possibly can in your editing process. Now, I edit with Lightroom. You may use Adobe Camera Raw or you may use Affinity Photo or whatever, but I really highly recommend that you do your uh, sharpening and noise reduction as soon, as soon as you can. Now, I start out in Lightroom and I have many tutorials where you'll see me doing my workflow videos where I'm starting out in Lightroom. And I always tell you, I'm not doing any noise reduction here. I'm not doing any sharpening. I'm just doing basic adjustments. And after I do those basic adjustments, I send it into Photoshop and there I will do any uh, noise reduction or sharpening as needed. But I'm gonna do that pretty much, uh, you know, right at the beginning of the process. So the beginning of your workflow is really where you want to do your noise reduction and sharpening. Topaz Denoise AI, Topaz Sharpen AI. Now, on this slide, I have the a piece of the interface of each one of these pieces of software. Uh, Topaz Denoise AI on the top, and on the right under that, I have the uh, Sharpen AI, a piece of its interface. Now, you'll notice one thing here. They both have remove noise or noise suppression, and they both have sharpen. Okay, so they both do similar things, right? Or the same things. But are they the same or are they different? And, uh, and a lot of confusion comes in here. And I've had confusion here too. Well, gosh, if they both sharpen and they both do noise reduction, which one am I supposed to use? I'm kind of confused. So again, that's what this tutorial is about today. Try to uh, dispel some of that confusion for you. Let's talk about Topaz Denoise AI first. All right, its primary function is noise removal. Okay, simply to remove noise from your camera raw image. And its secondary function is basic sharpening. Now, pay close attention to that basic sharpening. All right, it will only do basic sharpening. It won't do fancy things like sharp, like sharpen AI will do like a fixed fix uh, misfocused images or images that you've had camera shake on. So bear that in mind, it's basic sharpness, but it's noise removal is bar none the best in the industry. It is amazing what that piece of software will do to get rid of noise, be it low noise, be it super high noise. It, it is 
totally amazing. And I have videos, and you've seen it work and how powerful it is. But that's Topaz Denoise AI. Now let's turn our attention over to Topaz Sharpen AI. And its primary function is correcting focus issues, camera shake, and missed focus issues. This is where it shines. However, it has three modes. Number one, it has sharpen, and that's a basic sharpening. And that's the same, I think, that is inside of uh, Topaz Denoise AI, just a very basic sharpening. So if you don't have any uh, issues on your image, uh, the denoise sharpening will do just as well as the basic sharpening, but here's where Sharpen AI shines. Stabilize mode. Camera movement. You moved your camera a little bit during the, uh, the filming process. The image is shot. You can't use it, but through the uh, use of artificial intelligence and the smart engineers at Topaz, they're able to take camera shake images and correct those images really, really well. And if you've watched any of my videos, you'll see how well that really does work. It's quite impressive. And the other thing it'll do is if you've missed your focus on your camera, you got it slightly soft, it'll take care of those images like no other piece of software will. Now the secondary function of uh, Topaz Sharpen AI is minor noise reduction. And I made a note, and this is just what I think, and, and, and this is not written in stone, but I'm just giving you a rough idea here. My basic rule of thumb is an ISO range between zero, I don't even know if there's a camera with an ISO of zero, but I just want to say you start at the, the lower left-hand side of the spectrum zero, up to say like a thousand ISO. So if you have an image that is uh, up to a thousand ISO, but not over a thousand ISO, um, the noise reduction in sharp inside of Sharpen AI will take care of ISO problems. So that's kind of interesting. Now, now let's move on. Now I have these two questions for your consideration. Uh, can I combine Denoise AI with Sharpen AI? And my answer to that is uh, yes, you can combine them. Now I've heard people say, hey, you should never combine them. I will tell you this, I combine them all the time. I don't always combine them, but I do combine them and um, you can definitely combine them and you should combine them if you need to. And the second question is, should I combine Denoise AI with Sharpen AI? And that answer for me is that really depends. Now you shouldn't always combine them. So we're gonna take a look at that. When do you combine them and when do you not combine them? When should I combine Denoise AI with Sharpen AI? And here's my answer. Number one, if whenever you have an image with an ISO over a thousand, and whenever you have out of focus images caused by camera movement or out of focus images caused by missed camera focus. So again, if your images are over 1000 ISO, you definitely need Denoise AI to take care of that. But if you have images that have like camera shake problems, you know, movement when you took the image or if you uh, miss the focus, man, you definitely need Sharpen AI. So this is a time when you really need to combine these two products. So I've answered the question, when do you combine the two products? But this next question is, when should I use Denoise AI only, all right? And there are times when you will. And the answer to that is, number one, whenever you have an image with an ISO over a thousand, because Sharpen AI can't handle images over a thousand, but it can handle them pretty much under a thousand, in my opinion. And number two, whenever you have an image that has no focus issues, but only needs basic sharpening, because you'll, if you'll remember a little while back when I was explaining to you uh, Denoise AI, it has basic sharpening in it. So if you don't have any camera shake or missed focus issues and your image is relatively sharp, but it just needs that, because it's a camera raw image, it needs that little extra sharpness, that basic sharpening, Denoise will do it. So. Again, when your images are over ISO 1000 and whenever they don't have any camera shake or defocus issues, if they just need sharpening, Denoise AI is really all you really need. 
And now we come to the last question. When should I use Sharpen AI only? And the answer is number one and number one only. And that's whenever you have an image with an ISO under a thousand. Because remember, Sharpen AI does denoise your images, but it really only works well with images that are, in my opinion, that are 1000 ISO or under. So it will really work well there. And also remember, note here, Sharpen AI will take care of your focusing needs, all of your focusing needs, whether it's just basic sharpening or camera movement issues or camera misfocus uh, issues. So that's Sharpen AI. So if an image is 1000 ISO or under, it's really all you need in your workflow. Well, there you have it. I hope this video really uh, kind of helps you out to let you know when do you use these uh, products together or separately. So we've answered the question today, or I've answered the question, which one? Which one do you use? And now after this video, you should be an expert at knowing which one to use, or do you use both for that matter? Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, remember, happy editing.